I like it when portable antennas have innovative features. This particular antenna has not one but two. We're going to take a look at the big Kansas coil and talk about why it is different. I enjoy using vertical antennas with my portable operations. They are fast to deploy, and despite what some people call as an inefficient radiator, they really do offer excellent performance. I've always had good results with a quarter wave or a base loaded ground mounted vertical antenna. Uh, when the big Kansas coil offered the opportunity to test and review their portable vertical antenna system, I jumped at the chance to give it a spin. So what makes the big Kansas coil different than other base loaded coils? Well, first off is the construction. This coil is entirely 3D printed out of engineering grade glass and carbon fiber filled nylon material. This coil is lightweight and durable. Uh, the material is weather and heat resistant. So this antenna is rated up to 100 watts on the digital modes with a 50% duty cycle. The second is its size or the diameter of the coil. This coil is wider than anything on the market. In building, loading, or inductance coils, the diameter of the coil will affect the Q or the quality factor. Narrow coils will have a very high Q and extremely sharp or narrow bandwidth on the lower bands. If you make the coil wider, the Q is reduced and you end up with more bandwidth. I'll demonstrate what that means a little bit later on in this video. Now, Big Kansas Coil did send me an antenna kit in exchange for a video. Uh, they also uh, were interested in my feedback on how to make this product better. So my comments and experiences with it are my own without any outside influence. The Big Kansas Coil is sold in two ways. You can buy uh, just the coil itself and you can also purchase the accessory kit, which includes uh, this hub, these three legs and three 33 foot uh, radials with an integrated wire winder. Uh, the whips are not included with the big Kansas coil, so you have to purchase that separately. You can use, say, the 102 inch uh, rigid whip or a collapsible military style whip or the 17 foot extendable whip. Any, any type of whip that has a 3 8 by 24 uh, th fine thread on its base will work with this coil. The Big Kansas coil is 3D printed out of a glass and carbon reinforced nylon material, so the coil is sturdy yet lightweight. The material is weather and heat resistant, so it is rated for up to 100 watts digital operation. The coil itself is approximately 6.5 inches tall and 3 inches wide and weighs about 13 ounces. There is an Amphenol brand SO239 UHF connector at the base and a thumb screw connection for a ground radio network. At the top of the coil is a 3 8 by 24 thread for an extendable whip. The center of the coil is wound with 14 gauge stainless steel wire and has a movable collar to adjust the level of inductance. The collar holds fast in place and can be easily moved by squeezing the tabs. The coil offers enough range to cover the 17 through 80 meter bands if you are using a 97 inch collapsible military style whip. You can also use it on the higher bands by shortening the whip length. The optional accessory kit contains a hub 3D printed out of engineering grade nylon, three galvanized steel legs with a storage clip, and three 33 foot radials on integrated winders. The hub has a thread to accept the coil unit and the legs are held in place with thumb screws. The legs are stored in an innovative plastic clip with nylon webbing so they don't clunk around in your antenna kit. The radials are 33 feet long and made out of 20 gauge silicon coated wire with ring terminals on their ends. All in all, the accessory kit is well thought out and a good complement to the coil unit. Deploying the Big Kansas coil is pretty straightforward. If you have any experience with other base loaded vertical antennas, this is going to seem quite familiar.
KB9 VBR parks on the air. Here is it. I heard a Kilo Charlie one. Okay, I got a big fade there. Kilo Charlie one, Quebec. All right, thanks for North Carolina. Yeah, you also about a 4-4 here in the U.S. 9806. Back to you. Roger that. Thanks for Park 7-3. 7-3, have a good one. Uh, KB9 VBR, Park's on the air. Kira Z. <laughs> Was there a November 5 uniform Quebec out there? All right, thanks for the five, you, you know, five three, same here, five three with QSB. So thanks for the contact. Have a good time out there, seven three. Seven three, have a good one. KB9 VBR, parks on the air. Here is that. I heard a kilowatt delta. Kilowatt Delta 8, Papa Zulu Tango 5-3, uh, got two parks for you, US 9806 and US 4238, back to you. Roger, roger the park, uh, thanks a lot for the contact and have a great activation. This is KB9 VBR parks on the air. Here is Ed. Tuning your big Kansas coil is a little different than other coils on the market. Unlike other coils where you move the collar down to go lower in frequency, with the big Kansas coil, you start from the bottom of the coil and move the collar upwards to lower its frequency. One thing to note with vertical antennas is that they can be susceptible to the vagaries and the inconsistencies of the earth. And in using this style of antenna for hundreds of parks on the air activations, I've found that no two setups will be identical, nor will you get a perfect one-to-one -one matcher or SWR. And you know what? That's okay. Resonant quarter wave radiators will often have an impedance lower than 50 ohms when they are resonant, and that can show up as an SWR up to 1.5 to one. So as long as you're really below two to one, don't sweat the SWR and go ahead and operate. CQ, CQ, parks on the air, CQ, parks on the air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for parks on the air. Alpha, Charlie, one, Romeo, hotel. Alpha, Charlie, one, Romeo, hotel, you're a five, nine here in the U.S. one, zero, zero, five, four, back to you. I got you at a 5 8 in New Hampshire. 5 8. All right. Well, thanks a lot for New Hampshire today. Uh, you have a great day in 7 3. 7 3, bud. This is KB9 VBR. Parks on the air. Kira Z. Kilo Alpha 2, Mike, Papa, Charlie. Kilo Alpha 2, Mike, Papa, Charlie. I got gotcha. you. Uh, 5 9 here into Wisconsin, US 10054. Back to you. Roger, Roger. You are a 5 8. Jersey. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for New Jersey today. You have a great day in 7-3. 73. This is KB9 VBR. Parks on the air. QRZ. Whiskey 1, Romeo, Kilo, Delta. Whiskey 1, Romeo, Kilo, Delta, 5-7 here in the U.S. 10054. Back to you. Yeah, QSL, you're 5-5 five and five here in the Mike Echo. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for Maine today. You have a great day in 7-3. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Whiskey 9, Delta, November, Echo. Whiskey 9, Delta, November, Echo, I got gotcha. you. Oh, about a 5-3 here in the U.S. 10054, back to you. USL, thank you, Michael. You are a 5-1-51 into Southeast Wisconsin. All right, hey, thanks a lot for Southeast Wisconsin today. Uh, you have a great day, 7-3. Uh, 
Same to you, Michael. Don't freak. This is KB9 VBR. Parks on the air. QRZ. Kilo Echo Zero. Romeo India Yankee. Park to park. Kilo Echo Zero. Romeo India Yankee. Gotcha. You're about a 5-3 into my two parks. US 10054 and US 4238. Back to you. into my two parks. I am uh, literally next door to one of the previous offices you were at. Uh, what do you know? Same park numbers, 2482 and second park number, 3381. And I like what he said. You're one of the first YouTubers that I ran into, and it definitely helped me get interested in the hobby and getting out in nature a little bit more. Back to you. All right. Well, hey, that's great to hear. Great to hear. So I <laughs> uh, really appreciate it, and I'm glad to get you on the air and to get you in the log. So uh, you guys, you have a great activation today. Bandwidth is where the big Kansas quail gets interesting. On the upper bands, say 20 meters and above, this quail has enough bandwidth to cover the entire band. Uh, you can tune it mid-band, top or bottom of the band, your choice, and uh, you're going to be set. Uh, but for the lower bands, 40 and 80 meters, you may need to make adjustments, you know, for the top or the bottom of the band, depending on where you're going to be operating. Uh, but let me show you how a wider coil can make a difference to the available bandwidth with this demonstration on the 80 meter band. To demonstrate the difference a wider coil can make in regards to bandwidth, I did some measurements comparing the Big Kansas coil to the Wolf River Silver Bullet 1000 coil. Both setups used Faraday cloth, a 213 inch whip fully extended, and 50 feet of RG8X coaxial cable. In measuring the 2 to 1 bandwidth of the Wolf River coil, I found on the 80 meter band I got about 230 kilohertz. I switched out coils and on the 80 meter band, the wider Big Kansas coil exhibited 250 kilohertz of bandwidth. The Big Kansas coil had an extra 20 kilohertz of bandwidth compared to the Wolf River coil. That might sound like much, but on the low bands, that can make quite a difference if you're moving around looking for a spot to transmit and you don't want to constantly retune the coil. On the bands higher than 80 meters, the big Kansas coil has enough bandwidth to cover the entire band. So what are my thoughts on the big Kansas coil? On the whole, I'm pretty impressed with it. This coil is lightweight and its design is very well thought out. Even though it is 3D printed, I found it to be quite rugged. The coil has been bouncing around in my kit uh, for the last few weeks as I've taken it to several parks on the air activations. I really like the scale that's printed on the side of the coil. Uh, this can be useful if, um, if you want to record your settings. You know, sometimes tuning these coils can be challenging. And if you have a reference that you can go back to for a certain band or frequency, that will make the tuning process easier. Uh, the coil works well with a ground screen or Faraday cloth and the radio winders. Uh, if you're gonna use the wire, uh, the radios are very well designed. The silicone wire on the radios is easy to work with. And uh, you can also partially wind the radials to aid in matching on the higher bands. In all regards, the coil does its job and it does it quite well. Performance is very good with the coil. Band conditions have been quite variable over the last couple of months, but I never felt like the coil was underperforming. In fact, the times I did have used it on the 40 meter band, I've always got solid contacts even in marginal band conditions. Now, if there's anything that I could uh, be critical about this coil, it would probably be uh, the ground connection uh, right here. This screw terminal for the ground has a plastic thumb wheel, and it makes it difficult to attach uh, radials or jumpers if you're going to use those, those uh, thicker uh, Mueller spring clips. I mentioned that to the manufacturer, and they are willing to change this out to a brass screw, so hopefully my criticism on that will be unfounded. The other thing I found with this uh, coil is it is very light, maybe a bit too light. I was using it uh, during a very windy day and the coil had a propensity to fall over in gusts over 25 miles an hour when the whip was, uh, a 213 inch whip was fully deployed. Uh, there is a hook on the bottom of the base unit that you can see, secure, uh, secure this uh, for very windy conditions. But um, I ended up just putting my bag on the base to help keep it upright. So, uh, you know, be aware of that if you're going to use this in a, in a windy place. Final words, if you're looking for a lightweight, high-performance, base-loaded coil that offers better bandwidth on the lower bands, then I would recommend the Big Kansas Coil. 
Well, thank you to Big Kansas Coil for supplying an antenna system for this review. Uh, Big Kansas Coil is available direct from their website. Links are in the video description below. If you have any questions about the Big Kansas Coil, leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll be certainly to help out with those. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. You have a great day in 73.